First of all, the reason why we need to simplify fractions is because a certain amount might have lots of different names. Now, over here in the diagram on the right, I have a picture of one half. Obviously, that is going to be one part out of two. All right, so let's go ahead and write down the name of what we see. So I'm talking about half of that whole uh, square or rectangle is shaded. All right, now I have another name for one half, okay? And that would be, how about two fourths? Okay, so in other words, two parts out of four. What does that mean? Well, if I go ahead and split this into four parts now, now you can see that two of these parts are shaded out of a total of four. So two fourths is still the same green part, but it's the same as one half. Okay? Now one half is going to be obviously the easiest name that I'm going to use for that fraction. So I'm going to go ahead and circle that. That's kind of our starting point. And I want you to think of other names for one half. Oh, well, how about three over six? All right, three parts out of six. Let's visualize that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and move this line over. And I'm going to now try to create six parts. Okay, now I'm going to be a little bit off here with my um, line, but the idea is that now I have how many parts shaded? Three out of how many total? Six. That's right. Okay, now we can keep going, of course, and we can think of other names for one half. All right, how about four over eight, even five over ten, and so on. Now, you can obviously see the problem if we're talking about this green part, which is really one half, and it has all these other names, then when I have you do a math problem and the answer is one half, what if you told me, oh, it's really four eighths or three sixths or two fourths or five tenths? Now, you'd be correct, but that's kind of messy to have lots of different names for the same answer. So it's generally agreed that what we're going to do is we are going to write all of our answers in simplified form. Okay, sometimes known as reduced terms. So let's take a look at how you would do that. All right, in these examples um, from our extra practice section in our textbook, we're going to look at number 10 here, 3 twelfths. Okay, now instead of taking the time to draw out a diagram, we're going to look for another way to compare the 3 with the 12. All right, so what I need to do basically is break those numbers apart. Now, 3 is really 3 times 1, but we still have a 3 there. So let's go ahead and just think of 3 as itself. And 12 is made up of 3 times 4. All right, now 3 on the top and 3 on the bottom cancel each other out. In other words, I can divide a 3 out of each of those numbers, and I notice that I have a 4 left over on the bottom. And is that a 0 on the top? No, because 3 times 1 is equal to 3, and so anytime you have nothing left on the top or the bottom, it's a 1. Okay, there's always a leftover 1 factor there. So another name for 1 fourth is 3 twelfths. Think of it, 3 out of 12 parts represents the same as 1 part out of 4. All right, same thing here with 5 and 25. 5 is um, itself. We can think of it as 5 times 1. In fact, you can even write that down if you'd like. And then 25 is 5 times 5. All right. Now the idea is to look for common factors, something common on the top compared to common on the bottom. And those 5s would cancel each other out. And that would leave you with a 1 fifth. So 1 part out of 5 is the exact same fraction amount as 5 out of 25. Now you can obviously um, hit the pause button here and try some of these on your own. I'm not going to do them all, but I want you to think about how to simplify these fractions. Now I'm thinking that this is going to be 4 times 2 on the bottom, and so those 4's can cancel, and 1 half. Alright, another name for 4 eighths is 1 half. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and leave you to try most of these. I'm going to circle three that I'm going to work in just a moment after you try them. So go ahead and hit pause and give them a shot. 
All right, if I focus in on number 19, think about what is a common factor between an 18 and a 12. Now you can break it apart into twos and threes and so on, and possibly a four, but really the better way of doing it is think of the largest number that goes into each, and I'm thinking six, because 18 is six times three, and 12 is six times two. All right, looking for the biggest number will get it to us in one step. So the answer is three halves. Okay, now for now, I'll leave it as an improper fraction where the top numerator is larger than the denominator, but we could also write that as one and one half. Now we look over here at number 21 and 18 and 72. Okay, be thinking about multiples here. What are some multiple numbers that would give us an 18 and a 72? How about 9? 9 times 2 and 9 times 8. Now if I divide those out, those 9's would cancel each other, leaving me with 2 eighths. Okay, what's the problem with that? Is that in simplest form? Is there any other number that can divide into 2 and 8 at the same time? Yes. How about 2 times 1 and 2 times 4? All right, I'm running out of room here, but my answer would be one fourth, okay? And finally, 26 and 13, okay? It's really helpful to know your multiples of 11s, 12s, and 13s, and even 14s and 15s. But it turns out that 13 on the bottom is 13 times one, and 26 is really 13 times two. Those 13s are gonna cancel out, and so therefore my answer is two over one, or the whole number two. All right, I'll leave the rest up to you if you want to try those on your own, but good luck and I hope that made sense to you.